NASCAR shooting drones out of the sky at uh, driving events? Welcome back to Prop Noise, an all-new news show by me, Zoe FPV. I can't seem to nail the intro to the show, but oh well, I'll get it right one of these days. So yeah, starting off the bat, NASCAR is announcing uh, the use of a technology, um, essentially a giant RF rifle that can be used to take down drones out of the sky. Um, interestingly enough, a federal agent is required to use this technology as jamming signals in the sky is required for um, federal only use. So like local police department can't easily just buy this equipment and use it on machinery. Um, you have to be a licensed federal agent to use this kind of equipment. Uh, it's really interesting to see. It's a really cool looking uh, machine, uh, as you can see here. Um, you can use it to target out of the sky, bring it down. It basically disrupts the um, signals on the machine and forces it to land. Uh, I'm not sure what kind of effect this would have on a traditional mini quad, but um, I would think that it would screw up your video and or at least control your uh, or cause your RF to fail and cause you to have a fail safe. Um, it's interesting that NASCAR is implementing this technology. The fact that they're actually going to start using it means that it has been a problem at their events. I mean, otherwise, why would they have it at all, right? Um, and if you don't know, the actual machine or the technology that's being used, the rifle, has been around for a while. This is not the first time I've seen this. And it's not going to be the last time we see um, a drone shield, aka RF rifle. Interestingly enough, you can make one of these if you really, really want to. Um, an RF cannon is insanely easy to make. Uh, the thing is, they are very illegal to use. Uh, jamming signals in the airwaves is a very um, heavy offense with the FCC, so don't do it. Um, but if you need to do it, you can get a federal agent to do it for you. So I'm interesting to see where that goes and uh, what more comes from all that. Moving on, and interestingly enough, uh, Russia has uh, just tried launching their first delivery drone and it uh, failed and flew into a um, building. <laughs> that is uh, quite unfortunate um, as it's kind of a mark of the first kind of real move to, I don't know, advancing the development of drones in the skies and I, I don't know, the conspiracy theorist in me says RF rifle taking out Russian drone. <laughs> Coincidence? Maybe, maybe not. Maybe Drone Shield was there demonstrating the use of their technology for everyone around. Hmm? Um, but yeah, it's, that happened. And then, uh, interestingly enough, going on to a little bit different news, uh, Boeing has released the first hints of their new tanker drone. So in the aerospace and military end, um, Boeing has been working on new uh, designs for military applications, and this one is quite unique in its design. Um, so as a tanker drone concept, there's other things I'm sure they could outload it with, especially if it's a tanker, meaning that can carry weight at long distances. Um, the tanker capacity of this machine is unknown, um, but the idea is it allows drones and other aerial vehicles to refuel by having a remote operated vehicle. Um, the really cool thing you might notice is the uh, inlet design on the top of the machine. Um, it's it's weird. I've never seen any kind of design that has that inlet design that this one does. Um, it doesn't make all that s much sense to me to have it where they have it, not have it in the nose cone and or as other drones have it, something up top that kind of scoops the air into the turbo engines and whatnot and, you know, allows them to propel themselves. So, um, 
that that's really interesting design. Um, gotta give it to Boeing for doing something different. So yeah, for example, this is the um, other kind of design that's out there right now. The Global Hawk uses a giant um, suction nose. So when it's landing and stuff, there's very little risk of the engine stalling out and you know losing thrust. So the fact that this one, I mean, I'm assuming they're going to land it at a higher speed and kind of catch it on the on the um, uh, aircraft carriers, but I don't know. It's really cool. Anyways, moving on. Uh, kind of governmental related. The sky is falling. Uh, act now to protect the hobby and a related note. Commercial interests are taking over the skies and they're working together to essentially stop hobbyists from doing what we've been doing for <laughs> before I was born. Um, and uh, there's a, a coalition of commercial interests that have gathered together to repeal Section 336, which essentially makes the FAA stay out of our business as hobbyists and as hobby flyers. Uh, repealing 336 would most likely create a situation where uh, there'll be new rules and regulations put in place on hobby flyers, uh, for example, much stricter regulations, uh, licensing for hobby use potentially, um, as in licensing like a driving a car. You know, you'd have a commercial license like they have right now with the Part 107, and then you'd have a whatever you're in the airspace license. So, um, We'll see how this goes. The thing is, it's kind of scary. On, on one note, we kind of, in some ways, need it to happen. We need to have proper rules and regulations in the sky for commercial operations to take place. And by commercial operations, I'm talking about mail delivery drones, automated systems that are able to work by themselves in a way without having to worry about interference from hobby flyers. Um, I mean, be honest with yourselves in the community. You know it wouldn't be very long before someone dives a Amazon Prime delivery drone and uh, posts that footage on YouTube for the world to see. So that's kind of why they're talking about this right now. Um, and it's, it's scary because at one note it could be the start of a new era within uh, drones in the airspace. and could lead to them being more commonplace to drones being able to carry people in automated fashions to carrying equipment at distances. I mean, there's other countries that are implementing systems that allow their uh, mail delivery drones, among other things, to exist within their airspace. Um, and the United States is actually really far behind on a lot of these laws and rules and regulations. Although, meanwhile, you have NASA, who's working on the um, Highway in the Sky project to incorporate drones into the existing airspace with manned air traffic, and uh, that should be coming online by 2022. So, in theory, over the next four years, we'll see a battle um, for, basically, rights of hobbyists versus commercial pilots in the airspace. Um, and if you want to make your voice heard, please contact your local legislator. Um, there is a link in the description, or at least there will be once this is aired. And you can get out there and make your voice heard in both directions, um, because this is something that will affect everybody within the airspace. Not just hobbyists, not just commercial operators, manned pilots, everybody. Um, so please make your voice heard on that. Um, and again, yeah. Save hobby flying requires uh, education, not more drone regulation. I, I think that's true. I think we need to educate more than we need to regulate. And at the same time, if we regulate, we're going to have to educate. It's just going to be more mandatory. Um, so please get out there and make your voice heard. Um, let's see, and then moving up. A bit of unfortunate news, the Light Tracks XP Tour has been uh, moved back to 2019. Um, I'm not sure how much has, has been announced officially yet, but uh, it's been about a week. And I set aside about three and a half months of my life to this event, and I've been getting machines ready for just this trip for the summer. And uh, now I have three months of my life up in the air, um, what I'm going to do with. 
and that I'm going to figure out soon. So if you want to come hang out with me or you want me to go hang out with you, leave a comment, send me a message. I'd like to go travel around a little bit and see the world with my inverted machines and possibly bring a giant drone to you and have some fun. Um, so yeah, that's uh, happened. Um, and in a bit of positive news, if you've been on that 3D hype train lately, uh, there is a new feature being worked on and added into the code base. Essentially, it is a slow transition uh, feature where it'll cause the motors to hopefully more smoothly transition between the throttle ranges. So if you slam the throttle really hardly between that, between positive and negative, it'll s slow down that transition period and reduce the judders that happen. Um, so that's a new feature that's happening. On top of that, there's an iTerm fix um, that's going into Betaflight that has also greatly improved um, 3D's capabilities, uh, making it smoother, making the transitions even more buttery. So a lot of cool stuff on that note. Um, then coming up, make sure I got this IQ motion control. I should have had their um, page already popped open, but <clears throat> I forgot to. So something really special coming up this weekend. Um, the IQ motion control founders will be coming to Santa Cruz to hand me a set of prototype um, motors and ESC combo. Um, 6S 3D with this new sensor system that is going to revolutionize um, 3D. And uh, the really cool thing with these motors is that they work with any flight controller that supports D-Shop, basically. So the flight controller itself doesn't have to support 3D mode. 3D mode is purely on the motor and ESCs. So all these weird fixes and stuff that I've been dealing with and all the weird issues with KISS and all that stuff should be a thing of the past with uh, this new technology. Um, so I'm really excited to build that out. I should have a live stream of that happening on Sunday for people that are interested. Um, I'm going to have, I don't know, I might do a live stream also on Friday that'll go over um, some of the machinery that I'll be using, um, or Thursday, I don't know, I'm still planning it out, there's a lot going on this week. Um, and that's going to be the basic build out of the frame, getting the flight controller in there, and uh, prepping it essentially for the IQ Motion founders to show up, and uh, put this on the machine. So uh, Sunday is going to be really, really busy. <laughs> a lot will be filmed and a lot of fun will be had. And I'm looking forward to that. So if you haven't already checked out IQ Motion Control's uh, website, link in the description and uh, send them some love because they're doing some really, really amazing stuff that has me absolutely excited about the future of 3D. Um, and yeah, channel updates. Um, this is a brand new new show. I'm going to try to do this every two weeks. If you want to see this done weekly, please let me know. Um, I could do this weekly with more or less topics and take more time to talk about each topic. A lot of this stuff comes up during my week and I have a lot of opinions on this stuff. So I thought, you know what, it'd be cool to share them with everybody. I know some people think, hey, what does Zoe think on that? And so that's what this is for. <laughs> um, yeah, so if you have something you want to see on the show, please send me a message with what you want to see. And uh, I will look it over and try to add it. And one more thing before I uh, start wrapping this up. We have the West Coast Throwdown. Again, if you, I advertised this last week, but um, Team Dysonian, the originators of the Vixen frame and now the Alien F1 canopy that I've been working on, are sponsoring uh, West Coast Throwdown, I believe as a gold sponsor, with $1,000 worth of prizes and stuff to be had. So if you want a chance to win one of these bad boys, go to that event and uh, show us what you got, because you could very well end up taking one of these home. Um, on top of that, we're going to be planning some very, very cool stuff with these giant ships. Um, I'm working hard to 
try to get a kit of this together for about 500 bucks. So if you want to build one of these yourself and get into giant drone racing, hopefully it'll be as cheap and easy as getting into mini quads. Um, just, you know, please be safe. <laughs> these are big machines and uh, they, they mean business. So um, yeah, I, I'm really excited about that. Uh, it's something that hasn't really happened before. Um, and I, it seems like my camera got frozen. Let's see if I can fix it. I don't think I can fix it. Um, so on that note, I think I'm going to end it. Thank you all for watching. <laughs> I've been Zoe FPV. And this is Humboldt 710's awesome FPV footage from last year's West Coast Throwdown. If you want to go do some epic mountain surfing while tubing down the water in a river... That did not make sense, and that's what to do it. Thank you all for watching. I've been Zoe FPV, and until next time. If you want to support more content like this from the Flying Wookiee, please leave a like, comment down below, subscribe to the channel, follow my videos on Airviews, become my patron on Patreon, join the conversation on Discord, and as always, I've been Zoe FPV. Thank you for watching. Tune in next time.